Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. And whether or not they're practical, people love arm-mounted blasters. And I totally get it, because I do too. Video games and movies have done their job very, very well. And the foam-flinging world has no shortage of arm-mounted blasters. And it's definitely not just from Nerf. Even if they are a bit lackluster, they've still been very influential on me ever since I've been interested in the foam-flinging hobby. So let's take a bit of a jump back and check out some arm-mounted blasters and talk about the good, the bad, the weird and where we are today. You know this is coming. Cyber Strike, 1996, the strong arm and the auto grip. Obviously I showed these off not too long ago. There are other ones, but these are the most close I can name to arm mounted blasters. The strong arm is kind of, it's more of a mounted and then held version. You obviously lose all use of your primary hand while using this, and you do still need your secondary hand to operate this thing but the auto grip is a little bit more like it. Now that is an arm mounted blaster, which can actually be moved out of the way. I do have some sort of control over my primary hand, so I could maybe use a blaster in this, but it is a bit obstructed right here in my palm area. It's cool that that can be moved out of the way, but this air delivery hose is a bit obstructive. This long prime doesn't actually do much and it is even more obstructive maybe this is the better weapon to be used and you do still kind of need your second hand to release this little pin so that it flips up and you can't really grab that with your primary hand because it's obstructed while in use and it's not too powerful we'll let that slide because it was a different time but not a bad first impression for an arm mounted blaster from Nerf themselves. And not so much about function, but I still think these look pretty cool. Next up we have Spinet with the secret sleeve shooter of 2012, but it might be 2013. Sorry, I forget. Yes, I bought one of these back in the day for 20 United States dollars and you cannot tell me otherwise. This is the coolest blaster ever. I had so much fun with this thing and I really wish that we could find them nowadays for not outrageous prices because they of course have disappeared in almost 10 years. It was, of course, arm mounted, but underneath, and it was one of the only ones that extended. So it would extend into your hand, and then you could fire two darts at once or one dart at a time with the little notches on the top and bottom. The darts were also very weird because they had the springs in them and plastic backings. That's how the darts fired. The darts fired themselves. They weren't great. Those 20 foot ranges were, yeah, possible perhaps and the darts spun about their own axis because they were weighted in the back with that plastic and the heads were not as heavy it was an interesting system but that did not distract from the fact that this was like your assassin's creed hidden blade blaster whatever that means practical or not i love this thing and nothing seems to have come out since that's ever beaten it, in my opinion. Next up, not to be confused with SpyNet, we have Spy Gear with their Ninja Gear Wrist Blaster. For $9, I originally picked this one up on sale, so I don't remember the actual retail cost of this unit. And I did post a review and a mod back in 2017, really when I was getting into this channel, uh, making videos like this. It's bulky and it flies like 10 feet. You also wore it on your forearm and it did have a little latch that you would hit with your hand and it would launch one dart at a time. The darts themselves also were unique. They had very sticky heads. I think it came with three of them. I tried putting something else inside the system because it was so big and bulky, but ultimately that made it even less usable. Not a terrible product, but not really anything to note. In a similar form factor, you may have heard of this small TV series called The Mandalorian from an up and coming company, Disney. The Mandalorian Rocket Gauntlet. Now this one's a little bit more recent. It looks cool. It looks like something you'd wear as a Mandalorian who plays Nerf. It also costs $20 like the Secret Sleeve Shooter. It's got some interesting promo art. I take it back. It's amazing promo art. It looks uh, fantastic. I'm definitely going I don't know who decided this was great. It's mounted on the outside of your arm, so it's not an underneath version, so you would require your second hand to actually operate it, but it's out of the way, looks decent, but it's a single shot, just like the Spy Gear Ninja Gear Blaster, so nothing too crazy. And on the theme of Disney, we've got all of the Marvel wearables, so Iron Man, Black Panther, 
Captain Marvel. I'm probably missing some of them. Some unique wearable, grabbable blasters that are notorious for being low powered, but I guess if you like the aesthetic, you can go for it. Most notably, of course, the Spider-Man blasters. The best Spider-Man arm-mounted or wrist-mounted blaster to ever come out was the Spider-Man vs. Venom dart tag set. If you can find one of those still, those are fantastic because Spider-Man obviously lends itself very well to like an arm-mounted blaster. And those are just some examples of wearable blasters from major companies in major retail stores. When it comes to the modding community and homemades, oh, sky's the limit, we've done it all. We do single shot to full auto. Anything you want on the outside of your arm, the inside of your arm, hand, and we have access to so many more blasters than we ever have to put them wherever we want. And what have I done to make a wearable blaster? Well, I've done something truly amazing. It's not that amazing. Allow me to reintroduce you to my modified wrist rocket. Watch those wrist rockets! I posted a review video of this back in 2017. Pretty sure I called this a prototype back then, but guess what? I never updated it, so this is the final version. This is as janky as it will get, and I guess I'm proud of that. It is an Extreme Blast Zooka, an XBZ mounted to the remains of that secret sleeve shooter I talked about liking so much. This is why I'm kind of disappointed in myself because it's a very unique blaster. And I guess I do still own it, but not the propulsion system. This thing's powerful because it's an extreme G-dang blast Zooka. It's got some good power where a lot of the previous arm mounted blasters I've talked about did not. That was kind of the big thing I wanted. And it's somewhat modular, modular. This is of course my rocket barrel, which would later become useful for a certain saxophone or two. And you can put just in the base unit, a single dart through there, half dart, full length dart, it don't care. And it goes super far because again, Extreme Blast Zooka, rocket variant also does very well. And the mega attachment, which I don't have here, was also an option. But rockets were always my desirable thing to have on hand in case I wanted to fire a rocket because this was one of the more compact systems I had to do it. To pump, here's the pump, totally not secured and very awkward. And here's the firing pin. When it retracts, you can't actually hit the firing pin because it's hidden by the secret sleeve shooter. Only when it comes out can you actually have the pin exposed and then you can fire it. It's pretty easy for this rocket launcher to extend into my hand. That is because the secret sleeve shooter was not designed to have this much weight on the part of the blaster that actually traveled. So I thought I'd be creative and put a magnet. Where is the magnet? There it is. And I thought I'd put a magnet right here to actually keep it locked in a little bit better. That has not really worked so well. So usually if I were to use this in a game, I'd probably just put my hand on this little <laughs> rival ball for comfort. And that way when I'm running around with it, it's not going to accidentally extend. It works well enough. And this was something that I really enjoyed using when the barrel didn't accidentally fall out. So with that in mind, where are we when it comes to wearable blasters? Well, the easiest is clearly something that is arm mounted on the outside of your arm probably use your offhand to operate it, and it's probably low performance and a single shot. That just seems to be the most common out of all of them. And it is, at least in that configuration, out of the way, so you can use your hand. Like with this, I can kind of use my main hand, but still, there is this little bit down below that's kind of in the way, but deployable. Hand blaster is the best. This is a pretty chunky boy when you extend it, but it's cool. And that's what I want, which brings us to something new. This is the Out of Darts Little Rocket and Proud Papa variants. You've seen reviews on these before, most likely. It's nothing new at this point. It's an inline jolt style spring powered blaster maximized for performance given its size. And my confession here is that I actually helped beta test some of these units. Was I helpful in that beta testing? I don't totally know but I do have a few of these prototypes laying around and it was very fun to test them. But truth be told, when I first saw them, I was kind of like, okay, that's interesting, an inline jolt. I suppose this fills a niche in the hobby for single shot blasters. I feel like we have a lot of single shot blasters. The good news is that 
I was kind of wrong. A lot of people really liked these Little Rocket and Proud Papa blasters. Being able to mount a single shot blaster with decent performance almost anywhere really started to speak for itself. And I very quickly realized the potential for this and I was realizing that I was dumb for not realizing that in the, in the first place. And with a bunch of different barrels, yeah, you can kind of fire whatever you want, which is something that is kind of new and makes it better than just, this is a single shot blaster, this could be a triple shot blaster, a rival double shot blaster, a mega, maybe two small megas, if you are curious enough, an ultra style blaster, you know you wanna, and more. But of course, we're talking about arm mounted blasters, so why does this totally matter? Well, you probably know what's coming. As I was one of the prototypers, yeah, that's a word, for these blasters, I did get some access to some early versions of the arm mount, the AM, and the sliding arm mount, the SAM. It's pretty simple, but here is one of the earlier versions of the arm mount. So there would be two straps, one in the back, one in the front. Put it on the outside of your arm like so, and basically similar to what we've already talked about but an even lower profile and then a really solid blaster on top that will give you some good performance and some good options for what you want to fire. And in this configuration, you cannot tell me that you are not a super battle droid <laughs> firing your triple shot because that's what it would be. I'd probably change out the pullback here so it's a little easier with my offhand, but super simple and then you would just use your secondary hand to fire it. I should probably get the straps for this, but it's on a different blaster. And imagine if you could put two of them on here. Boy, now we're getting silly. But wait, it gets better. I think I've made it pretty clear what I like when it comes to arm mounted blasters. And this is everything that I have ever wanted in an arm mounted blaster. This is just so much fun. This is what I basically tried to make with my other XBZ mounted secret sleeve shooter, except it's such more compact. It's so much more elegant, you know, like someone actually thought about this and put design work into it. And it's a little bit more stable than some hot glue. So in this configuration, I'm not gonna give a full review per se because this isn't an official product as of yet. Again, you know what the little rocket does. And in this case, I really like this triple barrel, this inline triple barrel for half darts because you can fire three darts before having to reload. And even if you do a little, lose a little bit of power after one or two shots, still another shot. So you just prime it below, extend it into your hand, drop it back down into your hand. right back in. In its current prototype version, it does actually lock into place back here, and then you give it a little bit of force and it extends, and it actually locks into place when fully extended. That is something I also tried to do with my old version, but could not get to do. It still can get a little irritating with your wrist right here, but that is to be expected again with this kind of blaster setup. So maybe actually wear like sleeves. I'll just put whatever else I want on here because I can. This particular Proud Papa as well was one that I purchased myself. It is the ghost colors variant. So all the barrels are orange. The main blaster is white and then the accents are black. I bought two of them because guess what? I'm gonna need myself at least one or two other arm mounts. I don't need any more blasters. I just need like a couple of these barrels and then just a pocket full of darts and reload them here and there. I think this is something to look out for if you're interested in this kind of system. The Out of Darts Proton Pack is obviously a bit more in your face and big deal scale wise. That is the current hotness from Out of Darts. But if you like something a little more goofy, a little more simple, then this might be for you. The more I look at this system and think about the ones that I just talked about, aside from my XBZ arm cannon, I think this makes all the previous ones obsolete. At its most simple, just the arm mount. You can put whatever you want there, it's gonna be out of the way and then just poof, that was fun. And yes, I guess you could put the sliding arm mount on the outside of your arm, even if it defeats the whole purpose. I don't know, you do you. That's gonna do it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think about this system? Are you interested in it or does it not really fit your fancy? I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I will see you later.